Welcome to another message from Bridge Assembly, located at 725 Granite Avenue in Helena, Montana. For more information on Bridge, go to our website at bridgehelena.com. It is our prayer that this message will help you to connect with God, connect with others, and connect others with God. Jesus Christ, you are Lord and Savior over all the earth. I'm not even going to say you're just my Lord and Savior because you are that. But in fact, you are the Lord and Savior over all. There's no subjection here. This is, this is fact that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So today, Lord God, as we worship you, as we proclaim your holy name, accept that. In spirit and his truth, because we humble ourselves and lay ourselves at your throne. Lord, we pray for our community. We always pray for our community. Lord God, the harvest is out there. Give us opportunities. Guide us. Teach us. Show us how to proclaim your name, to share our testimony about what you have done in our lives, to, to help reveal the mystery, that mystery that they're lacking in their lives. Lord God, you are who you are, everlasting. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and grace. We need that every day. We see a community that's so many people are living in hopelessness. And you are the only hope. Holy Spirit, today, I'll pray it right now, that nobody leave here today the same way that they came in. I believe. I believe, Holy Spirit, that you engage us in such a way, you challenge us, you convict us in such a way that we can, we can, we have to change, we have to make those decisions. So Jesus, once again, we glorify you, be lifted high, we praise your holy name, and we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and everyone shout it out. Carl, my mic's not on. It's working? How about now? Okay, hey, I'm gonna, can you grab me another one? I'll need a second one anyway. All right, well, that's... If you're on Facebook, sorry you missed that prayer, but that's a good reminder. You need to be in church just in case. Hey, for real, we're going through those songs, and, and we get to that new song, and it talks about how, man, God will not fail us, right? How many of you guys believe that, that God will not fail us? And sometimes we can get mad at God, and we think he's failing us, but we understand that we fail ourselves. So while we're singing that song, I'm like, man, I know what we need to do. We need to take a sheet of paper, right? We need to take a sheet of paper. We need to fold it in half, divide that paper in half. And on one side of that paper, you write down everything in your life that will fail you. And on the other side of that paper, you write down everything in your life that will never fail you. And what you're going to find is you're going to have a whole lot of stuff on one side of the paper and just one thing on the other side of the paper. Now, once you do that, I want you to ask yourself this question. Where am I putting my trust and my effort? Where am I placing my attention? Is it in the things that are going to fail you or the one thing that's not going to fail you? Because here's the deal. Government's going to fail you. Your job's going to fail you. Your friends are going to fail you. Your spouse is going to fail you. Your pastor's going to fail you. But the one thing that will never fail you is Jesus. So put your attention where your attention needs to be. And that's the one that will never fail you. Amen? Amen. All right. We're going to dismiss. No, no, we're not going to dismiss the kids. Charmaine, come on up here. Kids, stay in here for this. Charmaine, Charmaine's got some psalms. 
that she felt led to read us, and I get to be her mic stand. She's going to be the mic stand now that it's on. And we're just the same height. <laughs> yeah, but I got better hair. <laughs> okay. Pastor, uh, I talked to him this morning, and I said there's some psalms here that, that I think the Lord would like to uh, speak on behalf of our church body. Okay. There's Psalms 104, 103, 105, 104, 106, but only certain verses, not everything. Okay. Praise the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. You wrap yourself in light as with a garment, and you stretch out the heavens like a tent. And, the, and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. And from everlasting to everlasting is the Lord's love to those who fear him and reverence him. And his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. 105. Forgive me. Okay, seven, eight. He, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. And his, but the word he commanded for a thousand generations for your children's children. Remember that. I will sing to the Lord all of my life. I will sing to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. And I ask him, remember me, O Lord. When you show favor to your people, Israel and us. This is so good. Remember me, O Lord. When you show your favor to your people, and you come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance, giving praise. Amen. 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 Kind of nice when everything works together, right? That's a lot of what what worship was about right there and what's God trying to tell us this morning. There's a lot that God's trying to tell us this morning. So keep your ears open. It's going to be a great service. We're going to dismiss the kids now. Can I have that mic? Amy gets to take the kids today. No, hold on. Uh -huh. All right. Hey, how many of you guys? Oh, yeah. How many of you guys think kids' ministry is important? It is, right? Because they learn things down there, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff they're exposed to during the week, and they can come here and be in a, in a safe atmosphere where they can learn. And so you guys agree with me that kids' ministry is important in a church, right? Good, because we need some more volunteers. I'm serious. That's not a joke. We need volunteers. So I'm going to expect a lot of people coming to talk to me after service and saying, hey, I would love to participate in. And I'm not talking. You got to be down there every single week. It might be once a month. It might be once every two months. But we just need help with a kids. OK, remember that. Don't get silent on me now. You agreed. You agreed that kids ministry is important. Amen. Amen. Thanks for agreeing with me. Okay, a couple quick announcements. We Last Sundays, today's the last Sunday of the month. Please join us. We have our Teen Challenge ladies here that are going to eat with us. And, and usually what they do is they each sit at a separate table. So we all get to hang out with them, and, and we'll just do that. So you guys can just welcome them, encourage them, so into them today. It'll just be a great time. If you're visiting today or you're like, I totally forgot that it's last Sundays and you didn't bring food, we're going to have plenty. We're going to have plenty of food today. We're going we're gonna to be so stuffed. 
because we have so much food. So please stay. Uh, we are still doing our food. Is that the next slide? What's the next slide? No, Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights, that's right. Yeah, sorry. Wednesday nights are starting September 6th. That's just right around the corner, 6.30 here. Um, adults are in the upper level of the office building. Uh, youth is in the lower level and kids are over here in the basement. So please plan on attending that. If you've never participated in Wednesday nights, please do. And with that being said, I wanna invite Eric and Thaddeus. Come on up. Does this one work yet? No. Come on, no, come on up. Good morning, church. For those of you that are new or don't know me or I haven't had a chance to meet you, my name's Eric. I'm going to be helping out with youth ministries. And this is Thaddeus. He's out. We've had this youth team that's been meeting the last few weeks, and we're real excited. We've got an awesome team going together, and we are part of this September 6th launch. We're going to be launching the youth ministry. So it's from 6.30 to 8, uh, junior high, high school kids. Everybody's welcome. Please invite them. Uh, the first day we're planning on having Seth. No cones, popcorn, lots of loud music, so I'll apologize to the adults upstairs in advance. Uh, we plan on rocking the place out. Um, but there, there's some changes that are coming. Um, we've had Pastor uh, Amy, myself, uh, Doyle, um, Thaddeus, Jacoby, Lexi, and Charlie all kind of meeting together and kind of working on this, this launch, getting, getting youth ministry started on on a, a strong foot. So um, with that, I just wanted to, to give an update on what's going on with the youth. Um, and we have a new name. I don't know if you got the, the slide up there. Uh, the youth has been very creative and uh, we've come up with, with, a, with the name uh, Refuge Youth Ministries. So, uh, and so uh, Thaddeus is up here with me. Um, he's got a verse. We had some verses to go with it, and we just wanted youth group to be a safe, comfortable place where people could come and find refuge, and we could have some frank and honest discussions and just work together to, to minister to, to our, our people. So with that, here you go. Um, hello, my name's Thaddeus, and I just want to say thank you to your guys' church um, for accepting me here and for helping me come to see the Lord. It's been something that's really important in my life, and I'm really thankful to Jesus for bringing me here and bringing me to this great spot in life to where I was able to come to repentance from all my sins. And I, I really thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me and bringing me to this church. And I thank you guys here for accepting me. And I thank you, Jason, for like talking to me whenever I need you and for just giving me this opportunity. And I wanted to read a verse, a verse, couple verses from Psalms 91 about refuge. And it is... Psalms 91, verse, starting with verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and, he, and from the deadly pestilence he will cover you with his p pinions. And under his winds, wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. See, I find that verse really good because it really shows the way that David loved the Lord, our Lord. And with the verse that she shared earlier, it really showed that it's so important to worship him and understand his greatness and see how much that he'll shelter us from the, our world. Because there's so much evil that he is protecting us from right now. And it, I really love this verse because it also reminded me of last night for myself. I remember it wasn't really the best night for me. and I, I know I'm going off the books, but... I remember all I did was I just put on my earbuds and started worshiping the Lord. And I just remember I was singing these songs in my living room. And I just remember I felt the heaviest presence of the Holy Spirit I've ever felt in my life. And all I could just yell was, thank you, Jesus. And I just came to tears and I just curled over because I could only think of him and everything that he's done for me in my life. And I thank him so much for what he's done for me and the people that he's going to do help later on in life. And I'm really thankful for what he's done for me. And I just think it's so great because it wasn't the best night. It wasn't the best day at work that I had, but I knew that I could take refuge in him because he was there for me and he never left me that whole entire day. And I'm so thankful for him for that. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Thaddeus. So as you can tell, we're real excited about what God's doing in the youth ministry. 
uh, please invite um, youth to, to youth group on Wednesday night, 6 to 8, 8 o'clock. And the last thing is please be in prayer for us. Uh, you know, we, we need your prayer, and I know you are praying for us. So thank you. Appreciate this time. Amen. Isn't that exciting? Hey, if, if, you, if you guys have never, like, taken time before after the service just to talk to Thaddeus, do it. I just, I love meeting with him because it's like I'll throw out a question and then I'll just sit back and listen. It's just so fun to listen to him talk. He's got this crazy knowledge of the word without being like schooled in it. He's just a pure, it's awesome. So I am so excited that we got this team together. He's the only um, youth leader that's, that's actually here t- today. But uh, support this. Encourage people to come. If you got kids or grandkids, get them here. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. The leadership is is totally cool. I get to teach the first six weeks of the adult class upstairs. That's gonna be hard for me because though I want to be with the adults, my heart's gonna be downstairs with the youth. Um, but we'll get to hear their music, so that'll be like a, a plus. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, four ways to give. Let's let's do that real quick. We got four ways to give here. You can give online um, at bridgehelen.com. You can reach that really easy through our app. So if you don't have our app yet, I would strongly encourage you to download our app. You can text your amount to 84321. The giving boxes are always a great option. You can designate or you can mail it to 725 Granite Avenue. We love giving. We're such a giving church, and I love that about us because we look beyond our finances, and we look to God, and we place our trust in Him, just like you ladies place your trust in the Lord, right? So how do we want to do this? Do do you guys all want to come up and introduce, or do you just want to come up? The what? We're going to start with the video, so if you guys had hit the lights and start with the first video on there, and then you'll just come up. Yeah, I'll grab it for you. Drug and alcohol addiction was consuming the lives of the youth. Adult Teen Challenge was founded to address the growing addiction epidemic. And today the need is greater than ever. And everything we do always comes back to our primary mission, to make disciples. We want to put hope within reach of every addict. In 1983, Mike Hodges opened the first campus in Oregon, and now the Adult and Teen Challenge Pacific Northwest Family of Ministries has expanded to five states throughout the region. For the last four decades, we have been growing and refining our approach to the discipleship process. We recognize that people need more than just sobriety. They need every area of their life to be transformed by the gospel. So we offer a comprehensive approach to recovery. At the core of our ministry is our residential recovery program. When students walk through our doors, they meet Jesus. And when they meet Jesus, the transformation process begins. Within the structure of a campus and in the community of peers and our staff, they develop spiritual disciplines. They learn how to pray, how to study scripture, how to worship, and how to be lifelong disciples of Christ. And as their faith grows, they find freedom. It's a sanctuary. It's a place to check out from this craziness of this world and not have all the pressures of responsibilities, but just one thing in mind, establishing a relationship with the Lord. Addiction creates complex behavioral health challenges, so we have integrated Life Renewal to provide state-approved counseling by our own professionally trained addiction counselors. Our students participate in individual and group therapy, and our counselors equip them with the tools they need to heal from their past and apply biblical principles to their lifelong recovery. We are offering students evidence-based treatment with a Christian worldview. This will allow them to live their lives um, in a more successful and positive way while also helping them to stand strong in their identity. We were designed to work, created to be productive. So our vocational training program helps our students establish the skills needed to be productive members of our society. Our thrift stores, work crews, and other vocational experiences teach important life skills, teamwork, leadership, stewardship, and integrity. We help students discover the joy of an honest day's work 
And rather than sitting on the sidelines during their recovery, they build confidence as they put their new skills into practice. I see students really adapt very well in the stores. They're enjoying the environment they're in. They're, they're productive. They, you see a, there's a reward in work that you've never seen before with students. The work that our students do sets them up to thrive once they leave our program. Discipleship is not just about learning the gospel, but also living it out. David Wilkerson founded this ministry on outreach. So Hope Outreach gives our students the opportunity to discover the joy of serving to give back to their community, and to deliver hope beyond our campus walls. We work with local partners to bring compassion to our communities. Our students share their stories to bring prevention and awareness to local schools. We establish community discipleship groups for those in recovery, and we share the hope we have found in Christ through evangelism. At Adult and Teen Challenge, our comprehensive approach to recovery is allowing us to broaden our reach and improve outcomes for our students. Our comprehensive approach helps us put hope within reach of every addict and make lifelong disciples. Hope has a name and his name is Jesus. But that's a really cool thing to see someone being um, given that opportunity to experience hope for the first time and everything about them begins to change. I just have an undeniable passion for God. I, he has brought me through so much and it honestly could only come from Him. Probably the best decision I've ever made coming to the program. The program really molded me into a man of God. Like when I came in the program, I was a kid, I was 18 years old. Um, and it was in the program that I learned how to become a man as a student. Teen Challenge has uh, helped save my life. Well, good morning, church. It's so nice to be here with you. I, uh, I spoke to a few of you and Pastor Jason and Amy. It is like coming home. You are just the most welcoming church. There is just, Holy Spirit is so present here. And uh, last year when we got to be with you, I was really new in this role. So for those of you that don't know, you, know me, you should know yourself. But if you don't know me, we're flubbing this morning. <laughs> My name is Jamie, and I'm the executive director of the Missoula Women's Campus here in Montana. And uh, we're just really honored to be with you this morning and share this time. And it's no coincidence that you should have Thaddeus up here talking about youth. And Pastor Jason and I were talking this morning about the teens and what is happening and just all of the pressure that's coming down and the need for these this youth to really grab a hold of hope. And one of my favorite things about Adult and Teen Challenge is our, our slogan or our tagline, which is putting hope within reach. And uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to give it to you and you're just going to do it, right? When we, we feel like when we accept the Lord, it's like, whew, done. Okay, on to the next thing. But no, it's you have to continue in this relationship. You have to continue growing in it and needing it and wanting it. And it's the same thing with the women of Adult and Teen Challenge and the men. It's, it's the continual, like, I'm going to put it within reach and you're going to grab it. You have some work to do with it. And so we're just honored to be here with you this morning. And the Lord has tied everything in with your sweet psalms and just everything that's going on. So we are honored to be here. And I'm going to open us up in prayer. And the ladies you'll get to meet today are just a, a very small snippet of our house. Um, and I'll share a little bit about why that is. So let's just go to the Lord and then we'll get going here. So Father, thank you for this morning, Lord. Thank you for Pastor Jason and Amy for just opening up the pulpit for us this morning, God, to just share all the goodness that you're doing and the hope that is within Adult and Teen Challenge. Father, I just pray that as these women share, God, that you just empower them, Lord, to just be your vessels and share what it is that they need to share and for ears and hearts to be open to receive, God. You are so good. And your goodness is evident everywhere we go, Lord. And we just uh, come before you just in honor, Lord, and just humbled by your goodness, Father. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's a lesson to be learned from typing the wrong email address. A Minnesota couple decided to go to Florida to thaw out during a particularly icy winter. They planned to stay at the same hotel where they spent their honeymoon 20 years earlier. Because of hectic schedules, it was difficult to coordinate their travel schedules, so the husband left Minnesota and flew to Florida on Thursday with his wife flying down the following day. The husband checked into the hotel. There was a computer in his room, so he decided to send an email to his wife. 
However, he accidentally left out one letter in her email address, and without realizing his error, he sent the email. Meanwhile, somewhere in Houston, a widow had just returned home from her husband's funeral. He was a minister who was called home to glory following a heart attack. The widow decided to check her email, expecting messages from relatives and friends, and after reading the first message, she screamed and fainted. The widow's son rushed into the room, found his mother on the floor, and saw the computer screen, which read, To my loving wife, subject, I've arrived. I know you're surprised to hear from me. They have computers here now, and you're allowed to send emails to your loved ones. I just arrived, and I've been checked in. I've seen that everything has been prepared for your arrival tomorrow. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing you then. Hope your journey is as uneventful as mine was. P.S. Sure is hot down here. <laughs> it's a good joke, and there's reason for it, because... One person in the United States has died and eight by the end of this service. $22,800 was lost in the state of Montana due to drug abuse and $1.8 million by the end of this service and worldwide a staggering $1.5 million was spent on illegal drugs. $37 million by the end of this service. And in Montana alone, there was an article that was put out in January that in the whole state of Montana, we had over 10 overdose deaths due to fentanyl. So the rise of fentanyl is decimating people and it is, it's causing havoc and it is just wrecking families and children and so many things. This is a serious problem. However, what these numbers don't include is the side effects of drug abuse like broken marriages, broken families, abused children, loss of public resources, and so on. The cost of addiction is very high. But we are here today to talk about a God that is bigger than all of this. A God who, when called upon, is he willing to heal and restore everyone who has been hurt by drug abuse. The world says that once an addict, always an addict, but we do not agree with that. Teen Challenge stands on 2 Corinthians 5.17. Now in the light of your co-inclusion in his death and resurrection, whoever you thought you were before, in Christ you are a brand new person. The old ways of seeing yourself and everyone else are over. Acquaint yourself with the new. We have had a season at Adult and Teen Challenge. I feel like we're like... It comes in these waves where I, I sit and I'm like, God, what? What is happening? Man, the enemy just doesn't want what's coming. He doesn't want when these women call and they're finally done and they show up at the doors and they lay everything out and they say, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. The enemy does not like that. And we get the brunt of it, but God is good. And we drove here this morning and man, it was a beautiful morning. And you'll notice I only have four of my friends here. We are a house of 16. Last Friday, we loaded up in our vans and two extra vehicles, and we drove to Spokane, Washington for what was going to be our 17th spiritual emphasis, a time where all students from the Pacific Northwest Adult and Teen Challenge campuses come together, and we worship, and we fellowship, and we just spend time in God's goodness and all of the things that he has for us and as we were coming over the pass, we, became, we came to a very abrupt halt. A tree had fallen over the interstate. We were car number five up to that. Some really good citizens jumped out of their trucks and had some chainsaws. You know, we were in Idaho. Had some chainsaws and broke down this tree, and a guy with a pickup pulled it off the interstate, and we thought, whew, survived that one. I was very nervous because we came from 80 to zero, and no accidents that I know of happened. So we kept going, and then I got a phone call from executive leadership. Do not go to the camp. We have been level three evacuated. You need to go to the men's campus of Adult and Teen Challenge in Spokane. So we journeyed on, and then we got word that Silver Lake Bible Camp in Medical Lake, Washington, we were, we were supposed to be for four days, was inflicted with a wildfire. And it took the camp and about 185 other structures. And in that moment, there was so much chaos. 
where is everybody at? Where are all of our students? Where are all of the campuses? Some weren't even there. I-90 was getting shut down. There was just chaos abounding left and right. And yet there was this peace that surpassed all others. So I tell you that story to say, we are only a traveling band of five today because it's expensive to get our vans on the road. Gas is not cheap. And so with everything that's going on and some sickness and just things that are happening, we decided we wanted to be with you this morning and we wanted to worship and fellowship with you, but we just couldn't necessarily get everybody in one or two vans to come over. So that's why there's the five of us and these ladies are going to bless you with just an amazing word. And with that, I'm going to ask Miss Ethel to come on up. Hi, I'm, I'm Ethel. Um, I'm 44 years old. I'm a mother, daughter, auntie, and sister. <clears throat> I come from a single parent home with <clears throat> three older siblings. My parents divorced when I was two years old. I'm from the Northern Cheyenne Reservation. My mom worked and had a good job. My childhood was good but I was physically and emotionally abused by my mother. She worked a lot, so I was left with family to watch me, and I was sexually abused. I was very shy and fearful, always wanted to be with my mom. My mom had my uncle come and stay with us to help, to help around the, the house and took care of me. He was my father figure. He would leave for a while and come back home. He was an alcoholic, which took his life. I didn't feel safe anymore. My mom started gambling and leaving me home alone. I started doing whatever I wanted, hanging out with others my age that were making, weren't making the right choices. My first boyfriend and I ran away to be with him and wasn't going to school and drinking with him. Then I started hanging around my older cousins they had parties, and I got into doing crank with them. I was going crazy in my addiction. My mom couldn't take it anymore and sent me to an adolescent treatment, which was the start to a never-ending cycle of chaos and destruct destructive behavior. I did good for a while. I graduated from middle school and made it half, halfway through high school. I was in a couple of relationships. I left one, stayed with the other. We had two daughters, did our best to be a family, but our addictions took over and he physically beat me and cheated on me. I was using more and injecting and selling meth. We got married and divorced. And I went right into another relationship, which was very abusive and chaotic. We had my son, my family tried helping me. I ended up losing my home and kids. My life was spinning out of control. I was in and out of jail for DUIs and treatment centers. My kids suffering and unstable. My mom's health wasn't good. Um, having, an, having an abortion from a one night hookup. After my mom's death, I went to a faith-based program with my daughters. My son stayed with my dad. I finished the program. With the Lord, I got my GED, a job, a car, and going to church, doing life sober. Um, then I got with a married man that I worked with, started drinking, and left him. Continued drinking, and I got behind the wheel and passed out, went into the other lane, and hit head-on with another vehicle, killing an innocent man. After I got out of the hospital, I continued drinking, got another vehicle, and another DUI. My tribe kept me until the U.S. Marshals picked me up. I was sentenced, went to federal prison, and God will make a way where there is no way. I'm passing through the valley, I don't live there. I'm a child of God, for he is forgiving and good. O oh Lord, abounding in love to all who call to him. Psalms 86.5. I was, I was on federal probation, doing good. I got a job with my tribe, back with my family. Everything is going good with my, my PO and probation. 
Then I get into a relationship thinking I could be sober. I fell back into using meth and alcohol, leaving my family and job. I failed my patches, wasn't checking in with my probation officer. The relationship turned out being very abusive. I was, set, I was sent back to prison for violation for nine months. I started drinking and using. I'm giving up back with, back with my ex and the abuse starts again. I finally asked the Lord to help me because I couldn't do it myself. And the Lord made a way for me. Two weeks later, my boyfriend starts fighting me. I'm praying to God, asking him to help me. And he opened the doors for me to change that I would go. The police show up. My ex goes to jail. Two days later, I'm here at Adult and Teen Challenge. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine, Isaiah 43.1. Um, looking back at my life, I was full of anger, rage, shame, grief, and rejection. And with all the lies that I believed was out of control. Feeling like there was no hope for me anymore, I missed out on a lot of my kids' lives. What was the use? <clears throat> I gave up, no longer wanted to live. I couldn't get it right, but the Lord intervened. And now I'm facing my trauma in my life, allowing the Lord to take me through the healing process trusting him and fully accepting <clears throat> the Lord's love that he always had and always will for me, forgiving others and forgiving myself so I can walk in the freedom that he has for me, to walk with the Lord towards the purpose he has for my life. <clears throat> he is my leader, my heavenly father, and Lord and Savior. <laughs> I am strong in the Lord, Ephesians 6.10. And I have authority over all the power of the enemy. Even evil spirits must submit to me because of the Holy Spirit that dwells in me. Nothing can hurt me today, Luke 10, 19, because the one who lives in me is greater than every demon in hell, 1 John 4, 4. I am hidden under the wings of the Most High. No evil can befall me because he has ordered his angels to watch over me. I rest in that today, Psalms 91, 3 through 11. <laughs> So I'm going to go a little deeper. Ethel, thank you. A few years ago, there was an 18-year-old girl that stepped into the Adult and Teen Challenge campus in Missoula, scared and needing some help. From there, in her footsteps followed her sister, who is a graduate of our program, and now both of them are serving in Absolute Ministries over in Seattle. After that came a cousin, Delori, who is also a graduate and about ready to complete an internship with us. From there, we've had an auntie and a mom. That young, sweet 18-year-old girl's mom joined us, and this is Ethel. From there, we've had a brother, two brothers, and a sister join Adult and Teen Challenge. Can I tell you that God is doing something in this family? Yeah. Generational sin no longer lives here. And Ethel, you are walking proof. And Delore, you are walking proof of what can be done. Congratulations. It's one of my favorite stories. I just get the pleasure to live it every day, but not everyone knows. It's pretty amazing. Miss Courtney? Hi, I'm Courtney. I'm 24 years old, and I grew up in a good Christian home and learned how to serve the Lord. I have a sister who is my best friend and is a year younger than I, and three other siblings, which are all about 15 years younger. My family was always close-knit, but when my brothers were born and had special needs, that changed. Chaos and drama erupted in the once peaceful and quiet home my parents fought a lot when my brothers were born, so my sister and I learned to ignore them by going into our bedroom just to stay out of their way. I wanted nothing to do with my parents, so I stayed away from the house as much as I could. 
When my sister got married, I felt a part of me fall away. So I turned to alcohol, men, and toxic, toxic friends to fill that void because I felt rejected and forgotten by her. I had lost my best friend. My self-destructive road started at the age of 19 when I was first introduced to pot, which eventually led me to alcohol. And since I was underage, I turned to friends that were over 21 to buy it for me. I was staying out late at parties, constantly lying to my family about where I was, what I was doing, and who I was with. I was losing my family's trust. On Easter morning of 2021, I blacked out at the wheel from drinking too much at the bar. And in my attempts to drive home, I hit a telephone pole going about 80 miles per hour, completely totaling my car. I walked away from that accident with only bruised knuckles, even though the airbags didn't deploy. And by the grace of God, I didn't get a DUI. The Lord had his hand on me through that, but even that wouldn't be enough to make me see that I had a problem. Every day I was fighting with my family because they were concerned about me. I didn't want to face it and accept that I needed help. I thought that I was too far gone to be helped and didn't care what happened to me at this point in life. I just wanted the pain to stop. I started drinking heavier to build up my tolerance because I was made fun of for not being able to keep up and it only made my world hurt more. The months went by and I continued to drink and drive with my second car. I was spending the night at friends' houses in town because I would get too drunk to drive home. I continued to spiral out of control and before my 23rd birthday, I was sexually assaulted several times and learned how to stuff it all down and felt it was all my fault. Fall of 2022 came around and I put my second car in a ditch from drunk driving. God had his hand on me in this accident like the first one. Airbags didn't deploy again and my truck almost went down a steep embankment, but it tipped over and was stopped by a tree. At this point, I knew I had an addiction but I didn't know what to do or where to go. Part of me was glad I didn't die in my accidents, but I also secretly wished I had. I was ashamed to be around my family because I was known as the family drunk, not just by my family, but my brother-in-law's family. They couldn't possibly love me, so why bother being around? I felt like a burden to them all. At this point, I had completely lost my family's trust. I had hit rock bottom. I made the decision to come to Adult and Teen Challenge in December of 2022 and can truly say that I know my family has always loved and cared for me, but I was too blinded by my addiction to see that. They were scared for my life, not knowing if I was going to come home at night or if they would get a phone call saying I was dead somewhere. Romans 6, 11 through 14 says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but grace. I am now learning who true friends are, and I know my worth, and most importantly, who I am without alcohol. My past does not define me. I am restoring the relationships with my family, and am able to spend time with them and grow closer. I was never a burden to my family, and they are happy to see me doing well and getting healthy. I'm growing closer to God every day and strengthening my relationship with him. And ultimately, I'm learning how to be the woman the Lord created me to be. Thank you. Thanks, Miss Courtney. Courtney came to us from Washington, so her poor mother, when we were on our way to Medical Lake, was like, are you guys at the camp? No, we're safe, so... Latoya?
Oki, Nistu, Nitaniku, hello, my name is Latoya. I don't remember much of my childhood, and I have been making my own decisions since I was 11. Having abandonment issues, I would subconsciously enter into a relationship at the age of 15 and have my first child at the age of 17 because of it. I have had an abortion, a stillborn, and a miscarry. I forgot Kleenex. Um, my relationship with their father did not work out because of the depression associated with birth trauma, which led to addiction instead of the healing process of grief. I ended up with no place to go and would make the decision to let my children go to family members without support and guidance. I would throw my hands in the air with the mentality that whatever happens, happens in a rebellious type of way. Getting pregnant again and giving a child up for adoption and letting another go to his father, knowing I still was not mentally, emotionally, or physically stable. I have had a rough start at life, and the way that love was validated and reinforced to me was with drugs. And so I, I am imitated that to those who were close to me. I have been overloading my body with depression, anxiety, and drugs since my abortion. My coping skill was to sleep, and when I couldn't sleep any longer, I would use drugs or alcohol. There have been times in my life where I didn't want to live anymore. Having thoughts of suicide, hitting rock bottom many times, and my version of getting back on top was to hustle my way back to the top over and over but you were never really good ahead in that lifestyle. And after realizing that many times over, I started craving the Lord about four years ago. But I just didn't know how to get close to him. I knew I needed more than just going to church service to fill that spiritual void that we're all born with. I wanted to get my priorities straight, but I literally felt like I was at a dead end with no way out, which was forcing me to sit in the arms of the one thing that had been holding me back for so long, my addiction. Mental manipulation from a relationship I was in on top of using drugs and near-death experiences caused me to be backed up into a corner so afraid of everything and everyone that the only safe place I had left to go was my dad Greg's house. He wasn't home when I showed up and I really wasn't supposed to be there because he made it clear to me a year before that he didn't want anything to do with me anymore. But I broke into his house anyway and waited for him to get back. Thankfully, when he got back, he didn't kick me out. He knew he didn't trust me anymore to have me living with him, so it was either the shelter or adult and teen challenge. So I entered the program with a fully surrendered heart and a desire 
to get to know more about God. And as I had been craving a relationship with him for a few years, 2 Corinthians 9.1 says, we felt we were doomed to die. And we saw how powerless we were to help ourselves, but that was good. For then we put everything into the hands of God, who alone can save you. He can even raise the dead. Thoughts of not knowing who I was anymore would be filled with who God says I am. As I learn more about my identity in Christ, I know now that I don't have to sleep with a gun under my pillow, that holding the Bible near me at night and putting on the armor of God daily is enough, as well as being at peace with where I will be going when my time comes for me to leave earth. Ephesians 6, 3 says we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. And in knowing that, I've been able to accept forgiving those who have hurt me and also take accountability for my own actions, knowing that if I wasn't in the wrong places, at the wrong times, doing all the wrong things, I would not have been endangering my well-being over and over again. As God is in the business of reconciling healthy relationships, I have been reconciled with my dad, Greg. I know now that I am not alone, and that in the group of women I am surrounded by, staff and students, are for me in such a way that we would fight for one another. I am slowly being reconciled with my oldest and youngest sons as I am embracing the process of healing. I am confident that I am going to be a good mother for my children. As it is written in Joshua 24, 15, as for me and my house, we shall, serve, we shall serve the Lord. I know God is with me, has always been with me, and will always be for me. Um, when I did my rough draft of this, um, I had Psalm 91 in, in it. <laughs> I, uh, so like this is the second time that I read my um, that Psalm 91. So God's not letting it up. He's saying that that scripture belongs in here. And it also says, uh, do not be afraid. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the in the darkness or th that stalks at night, nor the arrows that fly at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 all around you, these evils will not come near your home. <laughs> For he will order his angels around to protect you wherever you go, so that you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. And it also says, um, oh yeah, okay, so I did get that. But I, I love that scripture. It was given to me by the Lord, and he keeps confirming that. This is the second time I did my testimony that somebody quoted it. <laughs> and so um, I think that's it. <laughs> but thank you for having us, and I love being here. Nice job, LaToya. I love when we can let our tears fall. It's good. So there's a, a video that comes next, but I think I'm gonna skip it, so don't worry about that. We'll just talk about it. Because honestly, they are, they are proof. So Pacific Northwest Adult and Teen Challenge is comprised of, as you saw in the video, Montana, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, and Alaska. We have 14 campuses. We're currently claiming Wyoming. We don't actually have it yet, but we're claiming it because they need an adult and teen challenge. And by the time the women get to our Missoula campus or any of our other campus, statistically speaking, we're about number seven on the stop to road to recovery. It's a big undertaking. 
We are not a 30-day program. We are a 12 to 15-month program. And it includes a lot. As you saw in our comprehensive approach, we've got education that happens at the residential. We have behavioral health services with a licensed uh, addiction counselor and mental health therapist. We've got vocational, so the ladies go and they work at our thrift store. They actually get to take what they learn at the center and they get to put it into public consumption, which allows them to say, hey, I'm feeling angry, I can't just walk away. Right? Like I'm at a job, I have to figure this out, I have to learn how to walk through this. On top of that, we do outreach. We spend a lot of time out in the community, serving with churches and helping people that support and partner with us. We like to be, to give back to them. All of this costs money. And one of my favorite things about Adult and Teen Challenge is we don't ask them for any money. See, I'm a product of addiction. I don't have a story like these women. But I have a story like some of their children. My mother was the town drunk. She was the alcoholic. My sister was the drug addict. There was always chaos around our family. And I became addicted to becoming perfect. If they were going to be crazy and the conversations were going to be about my family, then I was going to be the complete opposite. And can I tell you that's not healthy? There's some of you that sit in this church today that have that same mask. Because we're in church. Got to be all together, right? You don't have to, by the way. My mom went to several treatment centers. My sister did treatment, and then they put her on Suboxone and Methadone, which ultimately took my sister's life 12 years ago. This is a real problem. An adult and teen challenge in Montana sat open and accepting patients at the height of both my mother's and my sister's addiction, and I didn't know about it. I was in college, and I was desperate for the drama and the chaos to cease. In fact, I, I stopped talking to them because it was just very painful. So my mission as the director of Adult and Teen Challenge is just to share with anybody that's willing to listen. Because you might not need it, but you might know somebody that does need it. And how amazing is it that we have an opportunity with a bed open that they can come in, and we will ask them of no money. That doesn't mean it's free. It costs about $3,500 per month per woman to go through our program. About half of that is covered through vocational training. So them working about three days a week covers about $1,250 of that. The remaining we talk to friends and family to see if they can come alongside, but most of the time that support has run out. So we come to churches like Bridge Assembly. We come to the community. We do fundraisers. We do anything that we can, and the Lord just continues to provide so that we can continue to offer this program at zero dollars without any federal income. We do not do any federal grants. Alongside of that, we have what's called the Student Sponsorship Program. This would have been the video. The super cool thing here is, for $45 a month, you can become a sponsor of one of our students. How does that work? With your $45 a month, you have the ability to write them letters, to send them Bibles, to send them scripture, to pray over them, to be in contact with them. You get their card updates. We have a table out back. We'll be back there if you want more information on it. We'd love to share with you. We give you updates throughout their program. And then as they go to complete our program, which is about 12 to 15 months, you are invited to come join us and be a part in that celebration because it is a celebration, and we love to celebrate them in that moment. That is all of the things that helps Adult and Teen Challenge run. And life is getting crazier, and our beds are full. So in Missoula, we're working on a feasibility study to extend and grow so we can offer hopefully 10 more beds. That is our plan, that is our hope, and God, it's all in God's hand, because Jamie's plan isn't always the right plan. There is hope. And as you heard, hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. And we're just honored to be with you today. We're excited to be able to continue fellowshipping with you. And Pastor Jason, I'll invite you up if you want to close out. And uh, just thank you so much for listening and for loving on these ladies because what was once forgotten and overlooked in real life, they are shining stars of God's goodness every day. We're good at loving on people, aren't we?
This church is awesome at loving on people, so we're going to love on you guys. And there's, oh, those are hard stories. Those are tragic stories, but they're testimonies of victory is what they are. And we just, we love that. And, and uh, we're going to, worship team, if you guys want to come on up, we'll, we'll close with some worship in a second here. But we're going we're gonna to take an offering for them. So the ushers are going to come around and, and do something we don't usually do, and that's pass the baskets. So please, um, checks, cash, you can still get on our app or on our computer if you just have a, a credit card or a debit card or anything like that. But if, if the Holy Spirit's prompting you to give anything, please don't um, miss this opportunity to support this ministry. It is so needed. We all know that our current culture today is... I mean, it's all over the place, and and we each have people in our lives that are not in a place that is a healthy place, right? So, so when we hear testimonies like this, it should it should cause us to say, "Hey, there's people in my life I need to be talking to. There's people in my life that I need to be supporting, to be there for, to introduce Jesus in the conversation." Please don't miss out on that great opportunity that God is, is placing in front of you, and we each have it. So, so um, we want to support Teen Challenge with whatever. We want to love on you guys, and we also want to understand that there's people in our lives that, that we need to get involved in. Amen? Most important thing for each and every one of us is Jesus number one, but also to become a, a, a member of a body of believers, a support system. So we need to be inviting. We need to be um, meeting people at the door saying, hey, come with me. I'll sit with you during church. If you have questions, um, if I can't answer them, we'll find people. I'll go pray with you. I'll do all of those things. This world is hurting and we got the answer. So we need to start speaking and extending that answer. Amen. We should be charged up and ready to go. I'm going to pray. We're going to worship, and then we're going to be dismissed to, to hang out with these ladies, to eat together, to have extra desserts because we're at church and they don't count, and all of those things. Amen? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for these testimonies of victory, Lord God. We thank you that once again, you vividly show us that you are truly the answer. You are the only one who never fails us. So Lord God, there's so many other programs out there that, that don't allow you in and those programs, they just don't work. But Lord God, this program is centered upon the rock of Jesus Christ. And there is victory in that and there is success in that. Lord God, open up our eyes to the opportunities that are around us. Open up our eyes to the hurting people that are around us. Help us to get over our own fear to speak into their lives, to intervene into their own lives because Jesus, you're worth it. And you're the only one who won't fail us. So today we rejoice, we sing your name loud. And we just love you. So, Lord God, once again, don't let us leave here the same way that we came in. Let us be touched. Let us be moved. Let us be excited with anticipation of what you're doing in people's lives. You bring hope to the hopeless. With all this, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Worship with us. This concludes today's message. We hope you can join us next Sunday for services beginning at 10 o'clock a.m. at Bridge Assembly located at 725 Granite Avenue in Helena, Montana. For more information about Bridge Assembly, go to bridgehelena.com. And we hope you can join us next Sunday with Pastor Jason Metz.